Hey guys. Um, on Thursdays, uh, Chris, the Nine Don, joins George and I, and generally he plays against Crazy Stone Six Don, and I ask questions along the way. I find it very useful, as does George. Hopefully, a lot of you do too, because that's just great. This Nine Don playing a Six Don and. We get to look at why and when and everything. Uh, but last week and this week, uh, he brought a game that he played. One was against a uh, strong human. One was this one's against Leela, which is stronger than Crazy Stone. Uh, but the problem is when we taped it. I didn't have the board showing, so I'm retaping it. And here we are. He wouldn't tell me if he was black or white. He, he said I would know soon enough. So we go on. Right away, I know that he's black. He would never play this as white. Um, a lot of you know why, but let's... Double check. Okay. Check out the peep. <clears throat> the point here is this peep is a powerful one. It's powerful because if white lets us cut, check out the two white stones on the left. They're pretty weak. This is a powerful cut. Now let's look at its sister wall, meaning a wall that's quite similar. And now we look at the peep. If white allows the cut, the three stones on the left are not nearly in as much trouble as those first two stones were. So this peep is not a powerful one. So because of all that, strong players tend to just not play this. Okay, so here we are. He plays here. He has a specific reason for doing this. <clears throat> I've seen him do it twice, and each time it worked out just like he planned. Okay, so let's keep area one in mind. Ooh, area one, nice big area for white. We could come in now, or use a regular corner here. I'm actually on the wrong button, just a second. Okay, now let's have black come in. Let's, we're imagining a fight here, right? I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm making up some moves, but I want to show you what they all mean. Okay, white to play. White's a bit of a stick here. White wishes he had some help. Any move around here is Sente to mess around with the corner. Because of Black's thin corner, White can get outside influence to help his stick and attack Black on the left. This is specifically why Black plays short, so he's thick here, can't be messed with. So when the fight happens on the left, it's easier for Black. Now, some of you may think, well, isn't that kind of a fantasy off in the distance? No, it's not. It's very practical. Okay, white plays here. There are a couple ways. Well, let's look at one idea that just happened. White is now more prepared against this move white has a better base black is less likely to play this we're just going to keep that in mind okay white um 
I would say that A and B are very similar. Both of them are good profit moves, and both of them are thick, so that it's easy to deal with the left. Uh, check this out. Let's look at a white move here. And I would say on the left side, let's mark something with an A here. B is working with A perfectly. Very nice distance. Wonderful relationship. And white has every ability to play this way, which is an excellent approach. The point being that the B stone's in the perfect spot. Nothing wrong with B. But if black plays here first and we look at the move, the left side of the stone looking good. The right side, not so good. So it's less of a move. We can clearly say that black B is playing in the big area on top, totally affecting the top. He's just doing it further to the right, taking the corner. Okay. Onward. And now Black's going to come in. Usually, we see Chris play this way. He likes to ask the question, which way do you want me to go? But he didn't want to play it in this case because, like we said, Usually, this is a nice, powerful move. In this case, not so much. So because white has stored up his left side some, this is an easier question for white to answer. So he just comes in. Uh, we can say that this is a bit of a tricky invasion because the black stones are awkward. I mean, they don't have an eye. They're running out. Uh, but what Chris said was running out is easy, especially since black's thick on the right. White can't go saying... You know, like if in the bottom right, if Black had the thin Joseki, you know, there'd be some Sente here, right, for White. And then if uh, there'd be Sente over here for White, if Black wasn't thick, all of a sudden, Black's group on the left could start getting into trouble. But since he played thick, there aren't those moves so much. Come up, come on out. Yep. I thought this was interesting. One interesting idea is that Black did not defend the A group. Uh, I asked him about this, and he pointed out that Black has Sente against the knight's move. Black has Sente against uh, at B, killing, killing something in the corner. Um, all sorts of Sente moves in this area. There's a lot of free moves, along with a pleasant extension to eight, along with jumping out to I, along with jumping out so it's like gosh my group has so many options i'm comfortable just walking away well, that's insightful i would tell my students hey don't do that don't do that unless you're really confident that you're comfortable not just alive comfortable and he was comfortable here there is an idea of invading. Uh, but the shoulder hit is nice. 
for a few reasons. One, you can see black can develop the bottom here. That's a nice bottom area. So that's one thing. Next is this black move is really just asking the question. Does white want to come out and attack in general? Does white want to do an actual surrounding attack? Does white want to take the ter on, territory on the left? Black is not putting down a commitment stone, but simply a question so that he knows what to do next. White comes this way. White says, you know, I'm looking for area one. Well, black already stated I have no commitment to my A stone. That was just a question. So since you want area one, I'll come in area one. Right? White's real thin right there. Very hard for white to fight well. Yep. Oh, this, right. Um, when black plays this way, and then we ask, how's all the odds you come along? Um, about the same. Okay, well, what if black plays this way? Threatening to kill, connect. Now, how's the Aji? Uh, black's way closer to this area. The Aji is fiercer. So he connected thickly into white's thin area. I thought that was insightful. What comes out? Black. Okay, a couple things just happened. Black can now capture the stone uh, in Sente, right? Because white doesn't want to get cut apart. So that's one positive. Next, if white tries to surround, black still just gets out. This move surprised me because it's such a slow step but it's a forcing move and does a lot and white answers very patiently calmly and thickly so cleaned up the aji but there's still easy escape and life for black so black that's right he played here i haven't seen this since yesterday a number of moves I forgot. Uh, this is interesting. We could see it as another asking move. Uh, Black's preparing for an eye. That's nice. Black says, do you want area one? Because if you don't, I'm happy to just walk in, right? I can just walk in. That's big. So do you want to keep it? So it's a question and preparing for an eye and preparing for messing with the corner. In game, you'll see. Then out. This is a real statement about the A group. He's looked at his options and decided that white cannot surround my A group. I cannot hurt my A group. I'm fine. Now, I, if my student told me that, I demand him to prove it to me because that's a far reach. You better know what you're doing if you're going to ignore the A group. Now, if they just said, oh, he can't surround me. Okay. I'm, I'm just, all I'm saying is black is playing sharply. That's all I'm saying. I'm out. Black gets out. White does not like the idea of black coming down. That's big points, big security. 
So why it threatens to cut? Problem is, it doesn't. It threatens to cut, but it doesn't threaten to surround black. So if white comes through, all you can do is cut. Got to save. Out we go. So white's move doesn't threaten to surround black. Talk about a knee-jerk reaction. Boom. Why do we think about it? We don't want to get cut. Well, he looked. He goes, there? I can still get out. So he has a free move. Nice to get free moves. Black goes this way. Okay. We talked about this. He's thinking this is big because if white ignores, well, first we can just cut or clamp or various things. So really big in the corner. Okay, gotcha. And it's good towards life. This way, um, there's definite Aji going on here. And he said he really had to make a decision. <clears throat> if now is the time to get out, then he needs to get out right now. If he thinks he's going to be just fine, so he said it was kind of a turning point in the game for him. Okay. Here he says, uh, at this point, if black plays a wrong move, black's going to lose the game. Let's look at white. If he comes out and white gets the whole left, if he didn't need to get out, this is way big. On the other hand, if he comes in, but he's not alive, then that's way big. So this is the first time in the game where he had to be sure about what he was doing everything else you kind of play, you read out some play a good move no problems but here you got to be exact you have to know what you're doing right nice stretch very pretty move uh-huh that creates one eye right Okay, black needs the second eye. Come on down. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then here. So if white cuts, black can connect under. So a bit of a me eye. Okay, and then what? Out. Here we talked about, you know, when uh, um, uh, early dawn player or Q player is trying to live here. It can be daunting. It says, well, first you need to be aware of the knight's move. That's a tool you can use. This gap is a total tool that can be used. And the peep. You have to do them all correctly. So one, if we cut, white dies on the left. Okay, so that's a free peep. And now, this move, 
that's the move in all the game that's the one that i found the scariest i don't think i'd have the courage to play it i'm not sure because you're not threatening an eye i mean it's just a gote connection if it's me i want to you know let's use that nice move let's come in here let's do all these things it's like no none of these really work unless you have this move in i don't know this scared me i think what i did was uh go to kill him and he lived like easy so we got back to the game on through and he says now black is simply alive because if black cuts at a the b group dies and if black atari's at c it's either an i or black's out and he already has an i so life so that's game now they went on a bit let's see how it goes white atari two eyes okay so now chris the nine don says i'm ahead on points because white got nothing on the left so as long as my a group doesn't die i'll be good so once he said that i'm expecting one of these kinds of moves right some sort of i'm getting out you can't cut me move he played here and i'm like what so i had to do some reading and it's like well if black walks out and white says no there's some serious trouble here i believe we can just go I, I don't want to read it out and mess up his game. The fight becomes very weak. Uh, part of it is this move. If white says, aha, I've surrounded you. Well, then there's this problem. Something's dying here. Right? trouble for for white okay that just a slight readout and he connects on a yep sorry cut before connect very nice yep out cut alive so first he gets his a group alive now he has his b group alive notice the right getting bigger and bigger for black and now black just goes to cut and kill something here black played away because if white saves the two stones black cuts at b and the left dies so white c is not scenting we're alive or we're alive so he was able to get d which is a really big dare i say opening move get the odd in something was off there but we're here and black kills this white group does the game continue 
Oh, just a little bit. All he has to do is make sure white doesn't get a big area here, which white doesn't. And this is where white resigns. There's just nothing left to do. Black can get a really big capture at A. Black can, you know, cut at B. Lots of things to do. Okay, well, that's me trying to remember all the things he said. Hopefully it meant something to you. This is high-level stuff, which is what our Thursdays are about. Um, and that's it. Okay, guys, hope it was helpful. Catch y'all later.